I want to talk to you a little bit about plein air painting versus studio painting and some of the pros and cons of each. Um, things to look for when you're working from photos. I was a plein air guy for about 23 years and I was very devoted to it and I didn't do anything but plein air and I was very resistant to any working from any photographs. Um, gradually though, um, I was given a digital camera and I changed my views a little bit. Um, there's a lot of great reasons to do plein air painting. You see the colors more accurately. It's more of an experience so you really remember where you were at the time. It's an expression of that particular day at this particular spot. So it's very special and um, I remember every plein air painting that I ever did. Whereas studio paintings, I don't often have that emotional connection to them. Um, so I really feel like I learned a lot from plein air. Um, but there's some drawbacks too. You have to work very quickly. Um, you might miss a beautiful lighting effect that just lasts for a second and you unable to get it. Um, there's clouds moving across that change the weather very dramatically and um, that weather instant is lost forever and you have to kind of rig um, which sometimes is successful and sometimes not. So it it creates a speed pressure which in some ways is good but in some ways it's not. Um, so as a studio painter I try to um, look at the photographs that I take and I try to make them more like plein air and um, I found that it's not that hard to do really. Um, one of the things that you have to realize about the camera is it's a different kind of an eye than, than a human eye. The human eye is much more sophisticated and can edit things out and it can emphasize certain things whereas the camera is just a reporter. It just gets all this data and puts it on a page for you and it flattens a huge amount of space into a little piece of paper and you as a painter if you're going to endeavor to be a realistic painter you have to put the three dimension back in and I'm, I'm using this photo as an illustration of some of the problems that are common with photographs and you can see in this photograph this color way back here it looks very close to white. Here's the white on the border here and, and you can see that it's very close and um, that's a common problem in photographs because of the high contrast of the sunlight. The really light areas get all bleached out and you see it here. Again it's almost like a white when the actual color is like a yellow green color about three or four notches deeper in value and much more interesting. The same with the darks, it goes the other way. Oftentimes the darks are kind of like this. They're too dark and just kind of colorless like this shadow here. I know from my plein air experience that there's a lot of warmth getting in there because some of this light is getting in through the trees and creating a nice transparency there. So I don't really see it on this painting, on this photograph, but I could create that in my painting. Another thing I've noticed about photographs is the horizon line is distorted. You can see if I drew a line through here my horizon line is right around right about in there. Well if I took that and duplicated it exactly on my painting um, it's not going to be right and what I've learned from experience is that that horizon line has to be raised up to compensate for that compression of space there. So uh, that's one of the things I look for. So really um, you just lose a lot from a photograph and you have to put that back by making the values more accurate, by making the colors in the shadows brighter and um, in this particular painting I know what I did. Um, I made these shadows beautiful purples. I put all these pinks and purples and, and light blue tones to balance out all this green that I had here. Um, in this shadow here, instead of this pervasive kind of a green color, I had more purples and um, lavenders and blues. I varied the color a lot. So you really want to uh, also 
in your painting, make sure that you have a sense of where the light is coming from. That is very important. Uh, if you have a sense of light going through your painting, it just makes it very real for the viewer because our eyes are very sophisticated. We can get like a little clue of what's going on and our brain takes that information and processes it and completes the picture. So you don't have to really spell it out. Whereas the, the camera gives you a lot of details, but it doesn't emphasize what is more important. That's your job as the artist to um, make it more interesting, um, direct the viewer to the part of the painting that you think is the most important. And in this particular painting, the focus was this tunnel effect that was leading through and the trees, everything moving to the center, and this big tunnel that was going in there. So I spent a lot of time making my strokes go to the center and then going right up this road, leading me up to the tunnel. So um, I think it's good to work from photographs, but I think it's a great way to learn to get out and try some plein air painting. Um, don't expect to get great results because it's difficult. It's a big challenge, um, but it's a learning process and you will learn how to make snappy decisions. You'll learn how to see color as value. You'll learn uh, all kinds of things that you'll remember in your memory bank and that will supply you when you're working in the studio. You'll have those memories to draw from and uh, it'll make your painting seem a lot more real. Thank you.